we know comics work. We know comics are effective and graphic novels are effective with students, but sometimes the question is how do we how do we amplify that? And how do we make that even better for our educators? And so that's our mission of our organization is to provide that support as best we can with okay. the resources that we have. Yeah. This is Joseph Coco. I'm at ALA 2018 in New Orleans on behalf of Becky Hilburn's Art Process YouTube channel and blog. If you could introduce yourself, Adam. Hi, I'm Adam Kohlberg. I work for the nonprofit Pop Culture Classroom based out of Denver. Um, and we create educational resources for students um, based around comics, graphic novels, and other pop culture media. Um, and super okay. excited to be at the American Library Association conference. Yeah. Okay, and is this you guys' first time coming? No, this is not our first time. This is our second year in a row. We actually also went to ALA Midwinter in Denver this year. Oh, cool. Yeah, we haven't had a chance to do a Midwinter yet. Um, is there actually an artist alley in the Midwinter ALA? Uh, I don't believe there's an artist alley at the Midwinter, um, okay. but I know that the, this this show has a really great artist alley yeah. every year, for sure. Yeah, it yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, like like we mentioned before, we went to the San Francisco, I believe it was 2015 mm -hmm. uh, show, and the artist alley was... Uh, was, was a great place to be Yeah, because uh, people seem to get it. Uh, this year they seem to get a lot more that these are independent creators and um, th they don't necessarily have a whole lot free to give out, but uh, by all means librarians seem to be coming by and, and yeah. talking. I mean, it's great to give voice to independent comics um, and comics that are, that are creator-owned because I think that, you know, the best way to get them in the hands of students is to help librarians understand the impact they could have and how cool they are in general. Sure. Yeah. Okay, Adam, can you tell me a little bit about how librarians are responding to what you guys have to offer? Are you yeah. pitching programming to them? Or are you just trying to get them signed up for your materials? Uh, are you trying to get them to help contribute to the nonprofit? What's, yeah. what's been your general experience at the show? Um, it's been a really great experience so far. Um, really, our goal is to just put resources in the hands of teachers, librarians, and other educators so they can effectively use comics, graphic novels, and pop culture as a teaching tool, uh, whether that's at their schools, uh, at the libraries, or in other informal settings like community centers and things like that. Um, okay. The things that we really do that are great for librarians, especially, and that they've been responding to, is we actually create a teaching guides centered around really well-known published graphic novels like Lumberjanes, American Born Chinese, uh, Persepolis, and March, trying okay. to help uh, sort of provide some structure to the reading experience so that they know kind of how to effectively bring them into their libraries and really engage students um, in not only just reading the books, but kind of discussing the bigger themes and topics at the center of those books. Which is awesome. really great. So it's not just getting the books in the libraries, it's also making them part of the uh, teaching experience. Of, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And really just providing that extra support because we know comics work. We know comics are effective and graphic novels are effective with students, but sometimes the question is how do we how do we amplify that? And how do we make that even better for our educators? And so that's our mission of our organization is to provide that support as best we can with okay. the resources that we have. Yeah. Yeah, that is super cool. Thank so, you. Yeah. Uh, most of what you guys are doing is digitally based, or are you also providing physical materials and books and things like that to um, to uh, schools and libraries? Um, most of our materials are digital based. Um, yeah. Basically, we have downloadable curriculum, we have downloadable free comics, um, as well as downloadable teaching guides, again, that center on those sort of uh, more well known and maybe lesser known um, graphic novels that are out there that are. Um, more diverse that represent creators from different communities with different perspectives as well as those graphic novels and comics that really have an educational heart to them and we're trying to kind of bring that to the forefront of the discussion. Okay. Yeah. And that's the primary focus of your nonprofit, or you guys do other things in the comics universe or, or um, elsewhere in literacy? Yeah, so um, in addition to the curriculum development um, and we development of educational comics, um, we actually also run the event Denver Comic Con. Um, and so, for those who might not know, Denver Comic Con, uh, every year, usually in May or June, uh, and it's a very family-friendly, kid-friendly, educator-friendly con. Uh, we actually bring in, uh, we have an Educator's Day, we, we have a community program where we bring in about 400 to 500 kids who couldn't otherwise afford to come to the con. Sure. Uh, we have professional development tracks, graduate credit you can earn, and even a literary conference built into the programming during Comic-Con. Wow. Um, and the nice, and the best thing about that is that 
the proceeds from Denver Comic Con actually fund all this cool outreach that we do throughout the year, okay. um, so, in, well, including that how many, local. How many educators actually end up coming to the show, just as attendees? Um, anywhere between one to 5,000, depending on the year. Uh, yeah. This year we gave about 500 free educator passes away. Uh, wow. To educators from all across the country, but you know, especially in the Colorado area. Yeah, and um, those are teachers and school board administrators and coordinators yep. and youth services counselors and all that sort of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Anybody that um, is under that really big umbrella of educator, so anyone yeah. who's involved with students, helping students, and really um, interested in learning a little bit more about how pop culture can can inspire the people that they're working with in their schools or wherever they might be helping. Okay. Yeah. And do you guys have that kind of uh, feedback where uh, students are uh, telling uh, your um, nonprofit agency how they're responding to it, or are you just having to get uh, like secondary feedback from the teachers and and other um, people who are implementing your yeah. uh, your programs? No. The the great thing about um, what we do is actually we have an on-site classroom in Denver. Uh, where we run summer camps, drop-in sessions that are free for our community members to come in, take okay, advantage so you're of. You're reaching directly out to students too. Yeah. Yep, and then uh, we get them in the hands of students, we pilot all of our curricula locally, and, and we actually work with a group of about 15 teachers in Colorado who go throughout the state and are working in libraries and other places to, to actually bring these resources directly to students and get their feedback and bring it back to us. So it's a great opportunity to see how these work in action. And before we put it out there in the world, we really want to know, is it effective, is it working, and is it helpful for the people that we're really trying to, to provide it to. That is really awesome. Yeah, so you're not you. just throwing things out there and saying, okay, nope. teachers, you can deal with it. Nope, um, nope, you're <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> okay. Yep. And can you tell me a little bit uh, more about the uh, Denver Comic Con? Uh, it, it's it's also, it's open to the public, I assume? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, we get uh, this year we had about 115 to 120,000 attendees. We're, we're growing really big. It's our seventh year. What's, um, the, what's the age range like for the audience? So our audience is incredibly family focused. So um, we have people all the way from zero to uh, you know 100 years old coming to yeah. the con. Um, I would say, based on my personal experience going to cons all throughout the country, that we have one of the largest um, we we have the most kids and families coming to the con of, of any that I've personally seen. That's um, really cool. And we actually we build that into the planning for the con. So yeah. one of the things that we the have programming is reflects that and those sort yeah. of things. Yep, yeah. we've got about four hundred plus education panels for all ages. We have a ten thousand wow. square foot kids lab, which actually um, I'm lucky enough to manage each year. And the goal of that with that is to provide access to interactive, free, engaging activities all based around pop culture. Um, we we had about three to five thousand kids and families coming into that space each day of the Comic Con this year, and it's this great way for them to kind of have an opportunity to have that con experience, mm -hmm. uh, but for the younger generation and kind of get them to be that next fan generation. Yeah. And can you tell me a little bit about some of the comics that you use to um, uh, introduce into the literary programs? Are they are they generally educational comics designed for education? or the comics that you've just built programming around uh, to uh, facilitate um, uh, teaching directly to students with, yeah. or, or a combination of both? It's a sort of a combination of both. Um, okay. One thing that we do is we work with publishers to develop curricular units and lesson plans and guides around their books so that, again, teachers have that platform and that support to bring those into their sites. We also um, put out um, uh, educational comics that we develop with the help of awesome creators from all over the world, yeah. including uh, we recently um, had about a year and a half program called Colorful History, which was every other Friday we published two page history comics that focused on things that maybe weren't always in the textbook, um, places, people, and events throughout history that um, we wanted to really represent in the comic form mm -hmm. and get in the hands of teachers. And those all came with not only so those are just uh, small supplements to yeah. the existing yeah okay. yeah yeah and so and rather than having like a, a, a module where an entire day is spent focusing on uh, teaching something through comics it's just like oh this is a small compendium which is in comic form in addition yeah. to everything else that we've provided to you okay. yeah the idea is to excite kids with in comics in a bite-sized way but also yeah provide really free and easy access to teachers and librarians who want to use these but maybe can't afford to, don't have the time to, or don't have the access to those kind of comics and graphic novels that, you know, uh, underserved at risk, you know, those kind of communities are, are often the most in need of. And so yeah, we're happy to kind of help that along. 
yeah. yeah. And they, they might be the ones who would benefit from uh, seeing some of that information in comics form as well because uh, it might not be regular for them just to pick up a book and read it. Certainly a nonfiction book and just start reading it. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. That direct engagement and seeing another culture, another kind of um, person's perspective, um, that direct connection through a graphic novel tends to be like a really great way to get them to see that in another light or see themselves in another light. So it's great. Okay. Yeah. And sorry for bouncing back and forth between okay. uh, uh, the Comic-Con and uh, something that's more on the educational side, but mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to ask, how, how would an artist go about getting a table at uh, uh, Denver Comic-Con if they're interested yeah. in tabling at it? Yeah, so we open uh, registration uh, for applications for artists uh, typically in um, the fall. I don't know the exact date off the top of my head. We just had Denver Comic Con last weekend, so okay. it's all very fresh in my brain. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll have open applications for artists and exhibitors starting in the fall. Uh, we'll definitely be um, keeping people updated on our website and through our social media, Denver Comic Con and Pop Culture Classroom. So those right. are really the best ways to find out when things are coming out. And things okay, are, so yeah, are, just are follow open. you guys and you'll be in the loop. Exactly, yes, thank you. Okay, and um, is it welcome to all artists? I mean, I know you said the, the show ten skews towards a younger audience, but can someone with more adult-themed uh, comics, would they be welcomed at the show? Absolutely. Um, okay. You know, we want to support and provide access to all creators, you know, um, and our, our goal is, you know, not necessarily to to remove those sort of creators, but we just, yeah. we maybe put them a little further away from the kids area. Sure. Um, but, you know, we had, I think, three to 400 artists this year um, from all over the world. And, um, so the idea is really to, to have a really robust um, and supportive artist community at the con every year. And so um, we absolutely invite everyone to apply and, and we will... Um, you know, we're just going to accept applications and then we'll look at what we get and then, you know, we hope we can bring out some really great guests for next year too. Yeah. Okay. And how are librarians uh, responding to your your programs? I've heard a few people come up to you and say, I've been looking to start something. Mm -hmm. um, what about for the people that haven't necessarily been looking to start uh, in incorporating comics into their classroom? Uh, do you feel like they're walking away from the table with a, a positive sort of experience where they're going to look into it? Or... Um, uh, is it just harder to break through to those people who who, ha who don't have comics on their horizon, yeah. basically? Well, I mean, our, our biggest goal as a nonprofit is to break down as many barriers as we can to access. Yep. So for maybe a reluctant educator or librarian or a reluctant reader or, or someone who isn't sure if this is for them, um, our curriculum and then our, our resources are supposed to be like this opportunity to kind of have a bite-sized piece of it, engage and see if it works. So it's not a huge commitment, but it's yeah. a chance to really be engaged and get excited and see what we think is a really tremendous impact on kids and on communities when you bring these texts into the, the schools and the classrooms and the libraries. Okay, so you're working directly with them and saying, okay, I understand you only have three hours of time that you need to fill or can fill or exactly. can get your administrators to give you some leeway on. Exactly. So here is what you could do in that time. You, you guys are working directly with people to do that? Yeah, and, and in our local community, you know, one of the things we do is work with local library systems to send out teachers to do one to two to four hour workshops with kids on comic creation or reading comics or discussing comics. Cool. Um, and a lot of, of times we hear like, we're not sure if this is going to work. And then the response is so overwhelming that they want to bring us back immediately. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so... Because the kids probably respond really well to it. So. Exactly. Yeah. I think that uh, comics provide this, this non-intimidating, very welcoming, exciting platform to get invested in literacy, art, reading, creative um, thinking, as well as self-expression. Like kids need those outlets and uh, you know one of the things that's really powerful about libraries they provide um, so the, they're I, I call librarians the purveyors of inspiration mm -hmm. because they really are putting like they're inspiring kids directly and indirectly all day every day because they're helping get these books in the hands of those kids who need them the most and often the kids that spend the most times at the libraries are the kids um, who really are asking for that extra support and so we do our best to kind of help that along as well okay and if an artist is watching this and they have some educational comics that they uh, would like you to consider yeah. uh, becoming a part of your resources, uh, who would they contact? Uh, 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 they can contact myself. Um, our education director, Dr. Katie Monin, is also a great resource. Um, we're always looking for new ways to support creators um, and communities in need of educational comics or creating educational comics. Um, I think we're, we're trying to help move that needle along a little bit and, mm -hmm. and, and give that platform to those folks. So uh, please reach out and let us know how we can support each other and, and make 
you know, the world of graphic novels and comics just a better space for education as well as inspiration and engagement for kids. Okay. Yeah. And finally, would you have any advice to someone who's considering tabling at ALA AC for the first time? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think that my general experience has been that there's a lot of crossover where you're staying at your booth throughout the weekend, but also going out and talking to folks and making those connections. Um, a lot of time a conversation at a booth can do so much more work for you um, than emails or anything, that person-to-person -person connection. So just trying to, to kind of, as we all do, kind of um, going around and, and making those networking connections and then finding a way to bring people back to your space so you can really show them um, what you're doing and how you're doing it and how successful it's been um, yeah. and giving them something they can take away in their hands that's really representative representative of, of the kind of work you do or want to do in the future. So Okay, that yeah. sounds awesome. And yeah. where can we find your work online? So um, we are at www.popcultureclassroom.org um, and then you can also learn about Denver Comic Con at www.denvercomiccon.com. And we, right. our con next year is May 31st through June 2nd. Uh, so we have a lot of time to kind of get prepared. So um, feel free to email us or contact us if you have any questions about anything that we talked about here. And then um, we're really excited, hopefully, to see you at Denver Comic Con next year and, and to have you use our awesome educational resources. Fantastic. Yeah, Becca has uh, quite a few fans who do uh, more uh, kids-based things and yes. probably some people in the Denver area. So we hope we can send some people your way. And Please do. it sounds like you're doing phenomenal work. So Yes, we try and keep all of our materials and resources as low cost or free as possible. So um, check out our website. There's a lot on there that you wouldn't expect to be able to access and download for free. Um, and so, um, yeah, we're really excited. And, and of course, we're part of this community and we want to keep help supporting it and building it. So please reach out if we can do anything to um, help anything along that we can. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you, Adam. Thanks, I hope Justin. you uh, had a great ALAC. We're yeah. wrapping up here soon. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Joseph.